few announcements this morning. Uh, if you take a look um, in your bulletin, the church has acquired some grants, so there are some part-time positions uh, that the church is looking for, so please look in your bulletin at those positions. And if you are interested or know anyone that is interested, please um, see Pastor Matt about that. Um, youth group tonight, 5.30 here. And then ASP meeting tonight is at 7 o'clock here, uh, right after the youth group. VBS is coming up. Uh, very quickly, so please, please, if you can help sign up, there's plenty of opportunities um, to sign up and help out for VBS. We, the church has created their own um, theme this year, so please uh, see Janelle if you can um, help out and sign up. And Tim has uh, an announcement this morning. Good morning, everyone. As your staff parish relations chairperson, I have an announcement to make. First, let me reassure you that Pastor Matt will continue to be our pastor. However, there will be a change in responsibilities. As you might have noticed, Pastor Matt firmly believes in the Big C Church, the universal church of all believers. He has been appointed as the Warren Area Ministry team leader to help guide and support some of the other pastors growing into their roles and to help network the area churches to be more fruitful and effective in their ministries. Over the last several months, he's been working closely with Warren First during their financial crisis to help them determine a path forward. Because that work is ongoing, effective July 1st, 2018, Bishop Malone is appointing Pastor Matt to be the pastor of Warren First in addition to continuing to serve here at HUM. Next week on May 27, 2018, during the all church meeting, we will be discussing the impact of this appointment has on both churches. I would encourage as many people as possible to attend the all church meeting so they can hear and participate in this discussion. If everyone could join me for a moment of prayer. O oh God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Thank you for never leaving us alone. You call us into community which, with each other and with you. Thank you for this opportunity to help another church with little C in the spirit of knowing we are all part of the big C church because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. We give you thanks for all Pastor Matt has done for us our past, as our pastor and give you thanks that he is willing to serve the people of Warren first as well. Bless all of us so that together we will be able to share your love with even more people. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior of all. Amen. One more quick announcement on Vacation Bible School. In your um, bulletin day, there is this yellow form. You can sign the children up online uh, this year. So make it a little easier, so please, if you know of anyone, you have a child, grandchild, anyone, please do it online much uh, easier this year, and it is in your bulletin. Are there any more announcements this morning? If there are no more announcements, please stand and greet one another. Standing as you return to your places this morning, we're beginning our time of worship together. Clay and Carolyn are actually back this weekend doing some uh, recording work for recreation. They're back with them this weekend, so they're not here this morning. Uh, so Samuel's filling in for us, and Sue Baker on the piano, so we thank them. 
Uh, the first song this morning is Open the Eyes of My Heart. Let's join together, please. God, we just give you thanks as we gather in this place. We give you thanks for your wondrous love. We give you thanks for the blessings you pour out upon us every day. This morning, Lord, as we gather here to worship, we pray that you would open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Because it's easy to look with our own human eyes and see the world the way that we see it. But help us, Lord, to see it the way that you do. So we can see how you could fill us and use us when we leave this place. So this morning, Lord, fill us with your spirit that might pour forth from us when we leave. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
Friends, you might not know that it is Pentecost Sunday. It is the birthday of the church. It's a special celebration we have. And so one of the things that's traditionally done on Pentecost is to receive new members as part of that celebration or to have confirmation. We had confirmation last year. So this morning we'll be receiving new members. Some of those people who are deciding to join our church are here today. Some are not able to be here today. But for those of you who are joining the church this morning, I invite you to come up here to the Green Center platform, please, if you're joining the church this morning. And you can bring your kids up with you. And if some of you have children, you're invited to bring them up here as well. I invite you to come up if you're joining the church this morning. And Ed, I'm going to steal this microphone that has the white stripe on it this morning. find what looks to be an end. And we'll start at the end, and I'm just going to ask you to say your name so that people would know who you are in case they don't have your name with your face yet, and we'll kind of pass the microphone down. That way you can introduce your kids that way if you have kids as well, okay? Go ahead, Shirley. Shirley Hosterman. Shirley Hosterman. Megan Cassidy. Maisie Cross. Hang on a second. Let me try again. And maybe if you hold it closer, it's turned on. It's the white stripe, Ed. It's Kelly's. I need, they're in the back then. Sorry, everyone. Okay. We have the red stripe. We'll use that for Pentecost. How about that? We'll use the red stripe, Mike. Thank you. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Shirley. Try again. Shirley Hosterman. Peggy Kiskadden. Macy Croft. Kennedy Stifler. And this is Divine Beauty. This is Gianna Jones. And this is Jameer. Elena Vollmer. Madeline. Natalie Mondary. Sandra Johnston. Amanda Sabelnik. Gavin Sabelnik. Lila Sabelnik. Gary Fincham. Linda Fincham. Ryan Sloan. This is Jackson. Sarita Sloan, and this is Lila Joe. I'm Diane White. Adelaide White. Rob White. Tony McFadden. Thank you. So there will be words that will be appearing. This, we'll put those up those slides, gentlemen, for me. And I'll be asking you these questions. You can see right there what I'm asking you, and you'll just answer, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And so please answer, I do. Next question, guys. According to the grace given to you, we remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world. If so, please answer, I will. As members of Christ's universal church, the church with the capital C, we be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries. If so, please answer, I will. And then as members of this congregation, we faithfully, faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service. If so, please answer, I will. Congregation, we have words for you as well if you follow along on the screen. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love.
God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Friends, let us welcome our newest members to our congregation, please. I invite everyone to stay afterwards. Not only is it the church's birthday, it's also Janelle's birthday today. So there's a cake out there for Janelle's 49th birthday. I'm not sure how many times it's 49, but it is 49 today. She turns 49. And there's also a cake out there that says, welcome new members. So please take a moment, have some punch and cake this morning, and greet everyone. Thank you so much. We're so glad to have you part of our church family officially that way. Thank you very much. And I'd like to invite the children to come and join for the children's time, please. I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Okay, the weather's getting as nicer. We don't have as many people this morning. You've got to be more enthusiastic. Make more noise. You ready? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, man. Boy, what is with you guys? This school year is winding down. The enthusiasm seems to be... I thought you'd be enthusiastic about summer coming and everything, huh? Try one more time. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'm not giving up. I'll tell you why. It's Pentecost Sunday. It's the birthday of the church. It's the day we're supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit, Okay. If I ask the adults to say good morning, they're going to say a lot louder than that. They're going to put you to shame. You don't want that to happen. You ready? Ready? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, my gosh. Listen to the adults. <laughs> Listen to the adults do it. Good morning. Good morning. The adults are more filled with spirit than you guys today. Well, guess what? It's Pentecost Sunday. It is the birthday of the church. It's the birthday of the church because it's the day that God sent the Holy Spirit to the first believers, and the adults are going to read that scripture later. And so, the Bible says it's almost like they were on fire for God. In fact, that's why um, we tell people, if they remember, to wear red today, okay? Because red is a symbol for fire, a symbol for Pentecost. So you'll see some people out there remember to wear red. If they didn't remember, that's okay. But we wear red today as a rem reminder that Pentecost is about being on fire for God, which means being very enthusiastic, right? Filled with God's spirit for God, okay? In fact... If you look on your name tag, see Brady's name tag there? There's a symbol there, the cross and the flame. I think maybe we can put that up there this morning. Can we put the cross and flame up there? This is the symbol for the United Methodist Church. It's not just the cross, it's also the flame. It reminds us that we're supposed to be on fire for God, that we're supposed to be very enthusiastic and filled with God's spirit so God's spirit can flow out from us into the world, okay? So that's why we have the cross and the flame together. The cross, of course, is about Jesus. It reminds us what Jesus did for us. That's the main symbol for our faith. But it reminds us what we're supposed to be, and we're supposed to be that fire. We're supposed to be burning for God. People should be able to see that we love God by the way that we're living and the way that we're loving, the way that we're treating other people. They should see that, okay, from our actions. So we should be, like, on fire for God. Now, do I mean, like, literally on fire? You know, of course, I don't mean that, right? I wear red as a symbol, right? I'm not on fire, okay? But it's a symbol, like the cross is a symbol, or like the flame is a symbol. But those symbols remind us, right? We have the American flag in our sanctuary, okay? It's a symbol that reminds us about our country, okay? It's a very important symbol. We have a Christian flag as well. There are many symbols, okay? And that what, what, what symbols do is remind us. And what we want to do today at Pentecost is to remember to be on fire for God, to be enthusiastic. We want to be the people that God's love flows out from into this world. And that can't do us, I mean, God can't do that through us if we're just kind of, you know, uh, you know, God's okay. I like God, you know. I can take God or leave God. God's okay, right? Instead, we want to be enthusiastic. We want to be filled with God's love so that we can love other people, right? Let's say a little prayer together, everybody. Dear God, we thank you for Pentecost, for the first church, for the people that you poured out your Holy Spirit on. We thank you that they were so in love with you and the way they loved each other that people said, hey, I want to be part of that. What's happening there? And Lord God, we just pray that we can be that type of church. No matter how old or young we are in this congregation, 
We're never too young to spread the love of God enthusiastically. We're never too old either. So help us remember to do that every day. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks, everybody. You can go back to Children's Church. I hope you're more enthusiastic back there. At this time, we'd like to share joys and concerns. If you have joys and concerns to share, please raise your hand, and an usher will be around to pass you the microphone. Two in the back there. I'm going to share a joy this morning. I saw Dustin was here this morning. Dustin, can I ask you to stand up just so everybody knows who you are? So if you didn't see Dustin's picture in the paper recently, Dustin is, has uh, been producing his own music, his own Christian music, and been selling that. And there's, there's a display out in the sanctuary, in the narthex outside the sanctuary. We haven't had a chance to do that yet. And uh, Dustin took the proceeds from all this and, and didn't keep this for himself, but rather he gave it to charities. Half of it went to the Warren Family Mission downtown to help people here in our community. The rest went to the, uh, to, uh, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, UMCOR, which goes to help disaster victims around the world. And, um, for example, like the recent uh, things happening in Hawaii right now or the flooding that was happening before, that goes to help people like that. And how much did you raise all together, Dustin? which he split, he split among them. So that went to lot, help a lot of people. Dustin's music is original. If you haven't had a chance to pick it up and you'd like to, it's out of the narthex. But thank you for all you did, Dustin. The, uh, the charities now are the Warren Relay for Life Committee and uh, Open Doors, which is a charity that uh, supports the persecuted Christian church throughout the world. Good morning. I'd like to thank you all for your prayers over the last several months for my granddaughter, uh, Courtney, and her husband, Trevor, on while well, awaiting the birth of their baby. The, there were some con concerns during the pregnancy that uh, things were not going to go well, but he was born last Wednesday, May 16th, at six pounds and two ounces, 17 and a half uh, um, inches, and his name is Ryder Jameson. Thank you so much for your prayers. Um, I'd like to ask continued prayers for my daughter-in-law, Cheryl Cranston, and her family, and my granddaughter, Teresa. Uh, Cheryl lost her mother a month ago, and this week lost her father. So continued prayers for all of them. Thank you. I'd like to ask for prayers for my friend Mike Rockenfelder and his mother Michelle. Um, Mike's grandmother had been sick for a little while and uh, sadly she just passed this past Thursday and so they're, they're having a hard time. So please keep them in your prayers. I have a, another to share as well. Um, Nanette Isom called me late last night and said that her youngest son passed away just yesterday. He was only 41 years old. Um, they don't know what happened yet, but um, they're going to be doing tests to find out. This is the second son that Nanette has lost, so please keep Nanette Isom and uh, her family in your prayers. Are there any more joys or concerns to share? If there are no more joys and concerns to share, please join us in singing prayer hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds.
Would you please join with me for a moment of silent prayer as we come to our God together in prayer today? Lord our God, it is Pentecost Sunday, a day when we celebrate the fact that you gave us the church. You gave us the church so we would not have to go through this life alone as a person of faith. Because faith is meant to be lived out together as a family. When we hear joys and concerns, we remember, Lord, that we don't go through this life alone, that there are people who celebrate our joys with us and in our hardest times, people who pray for us and support us and then lend us their strength and their comfort to help us through those times. So we thank you, Lord, for that tie that binds us together, the Holy Spirit, your power, your love flowing in and out of each of us. We give you thanks, Lord, that you created the church so that we can change this world together to help those in need. Because we know, Lord, that there are people in Hawaii who are facing difficulties with everything happening with the volcanoes now. And we know, Lord, that there was a school shooting again in Texas and that more lives were lost and that still we can't find a way to work together to make our children safe. Lord, whether we're people on the left or the right, we all want kids to be safe. And so, Lord, lead us and guide us and fill us and help us to overcome the things that divide us, to unite us, to change hearts, to change lives. Lord, we know there are people who don't even know you as God. When they go through the hard times of life, when they face illness or when they lose loved ones or whatever they struggle with, they don't believe that there's a God there who loves them and was there for them in those times. They don't have a church family to love them and support them. So Lord, we lift them up to you and we pray wherever it is possible that we can live our lives boldly enough, on fire for you, for them to see and believe that there's something different about people who are filled with hope or filled with faith. We pray, Lord, that we would live our lives so lovingly so strongly for you that people could see and believe that you are real because of the way you caused us to live for you and to love each other. Lord, we give you thanks for all the blessings that we've shared this morning for new births and for things to praise you for. But Lord God, we come to you with the concerns of our hearts as well. We pray for you for the nets family right now after losing Tori, having already lost another son. At age 41, it just seems so hard to believe, Lord, and so we just pray your Holy Spirit with them in a strong and mighty way. Pray for the McCracken family, for Glenda and Andy right now, and everything they're going through with their family's health concerns as well. We pray for those people in Hawaii whose homes or lives have been affected and we pray for those recent victims in this school shooting and all of their families. We pray for Cheryl Cranston's family right now after losing her mother and father and just in this past month. We pray for the Rockenfelder family. We pray, Lord, for anyone who mourns, for anyone who needs the touch of your healing hand, for anyone, Lord, that needs to feel you in a strong and mighty way. And Lord God, we pray wherever it is possible that we can be a word of hope or encouragement or strength. We give you thanks, Lord, that there is a tie that binds us together as your church. And we pray that we would not only feel that here for each other, but we would want to extend that tie to the rest of the world, to those who might not know you, so that they might have the joy and comfort and strength and hope and love that flows from us because you are in us. Lord God, we pray this this Pentecost Sunday and always. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus said that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We worship God at this time through offering of our hearts and our treasures. We feel your joy and delight as we celebrate this glorious day. With a sense of happiness and gratitude, we eagerly offer you these financial gifts for your ministry in this community and beyond. May all who call upon your name be saved from selfishness and filled with God-honoring habits of generous giving. All praise and glory be unto you. Amen. Friends, it's Pentecost Sunday. We're about to sing another traditional hymn, one about the church. It's actually Janelle's favorite hymn on her birthday. I'm not sure if she's in the service or not, though. She had to go out with the kids this morning. So, But Janelle's favorite hymn on her birthday, it's the church's one foundation. We're singing verses 1, 2, and 5.
Our scripture this morning is the Pentecost scripture. It comes from us in Acts chapter 2. And the guys will pull that up for us this morning. And we'll read this for you. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues that the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Elissa, and Asia, sorry, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders, miraculous signs were being done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Amen. It's a story of how God poured out his Holy Spirit, how the church was formed, and how they lived so boldly that lives were changed and people were added to the movement that became the church. Would you please take a moment to pray with me and for me? O Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Pentecost is the birthday of the church. This is that day when we celebrate, that day that we just read for you in scripture. And I, I don't know if you've heard me say many times now, I think of the church with the big C, as Tim Torch referenced earlier today. Not just our church here in Howland, but all churches everywhere uniting together. Today, we received new members as part of our wonderful celebration of Pentecost, celebrating the fact that people want to be part of what God is doing. That's the story that first Pentecost 2,000 years ago, that God was powerfully at work in the way people were living and loving, and that others were attracted to that and wanted to be part of that family, and that's still our story today. Hopefully, it's a story for churches everywhere. The first Christians were living their lives so lovingly, so self-sacrificially, that thousands of people came to the love of God and more were added every day and the movement spread, of course, around the world, setting the world on fire like a flame or blowing through them, flowing through them like a powerful wind. That's supposed to be the story of you and I today, but you saw the kids, they didn't seem as enthusiastic as usual, you know? I think the school year is winding them down a little bit or something. It's easy to feel that way our son, ourselves sometimes, right? We're supposed to be the church, we're supposed to be on fire for God, but sometimes we feel a little bit more deflated, like the kids this morning, than on fire for God. Well, it's that time of year when the school year is ending, and many students are taking standardized tests. Sam just took some AP tests, and not long ago he took the ACT. So in that spirit, I'm gonna ask you a few questions this morning, but from a spiritual perspective. Here's the first one. The opposite of love, simple antonym. Now, if you were to take this on an AP test or an ACT, we would say, of course, hate. Hate is the opposite of love. You know that. Hate is the opposite of love. But over the years, from a spiritual perspective, I've learned that hate is not really the opposite of love. You could say, I love chocolate and I hate Brussels sprouts, and everyone knows what you're talking about. You love to eat one, you hate to eat the other. They're opposites, you're conveying opposite ideas there. But spirituality, faith at its core, is loving God and loving our neighbors as we love ourselves, loving other people. Well, there are many people I love, some passionately, 
but there isn't anyone in this world that I hate. And there's certainly no one that I hate passionately. Love flows out from me regularly, but when love does not flow out from me, it isn't hate that prevents that love from flowing out from me. I don't fail to show love to someone or help them because I hate them. That's not what stops love from coming out from me. So then, what does? From a spiritual perspective, then, what is the opposite of love if it isn't hate? What stops love from flowing out from me? Some days it feels to me like fatigue is the opposite of love, you know? Some days it feels like it's all that Janelle and I can do to make sure everyone's had dinner and the additions are done and everyone's been driven to and from their activities and you've just made it through the day and you're ready to collapse. You know what I mean? We all have days like that sometimes. The tooth fairy failed to visit Elizabeth several nights this week in a row because mom and dad were too tired to deliver the message to the tooth fairy that she had lost her next to last tooth. And then the next morning you see a sad little girl showing me the tooth once more that the tooth fairy forgot to come for. And Janelle and I are both high energy people, you know? You wouldn't think we could get that tired to not remember to deliver that message to the tooth fairy, you know? But it happens. We all have seasons in our lives or times in our lives when fatigue feels like the opposite of love. I want to be on fire for God, but I'm too tired to give more. You have days like that. Some days it feels like love. The opposite of love is fatigue. That's sometimes a good answer to the question, but we fight fatigue with rest. How do we fight spiritual fatigue? Sometimes people tell me that I don't see them in church more often because their lives are too busy and tiring and wearing them down and so they don't have time for church or God. This may seem counterintuitive, but I always have believed that it's making time for God and worship in our lives, being in the presence of God that fills us with God's spirit again, that energizes us to face the pace of life and its fatigue and its problems and struggles and all that comes our way out there. So being too f tired or too busy to be filled by God because we're too tired doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's actually counterintuitive. So other days when we all have, when we feel too tired to give any more, certainly too tired to be on fire for God, making fatigue a good answer sometimes to what's the opposite of love, I've learned this one thing that's an even better answer, and the guys are going to put that up for you now. The opposite of love is apathy. Apathy. Apathy is what prevents people from expressing love, from putting love into action. Let me give you an example from my own life recently. As some of you know, I was in charge of helping to pass the Howland School Levy recently. And I knew from the beginning that passing the levy, the key to that is overcoming people's apathy. People who were willing to vote, they would vote if you polled them, but getting them to show up to vote, getting them to overcome their apathy, not hate. It's not hate, nobody hates kids. Okay, there might be some people out there who hate kids. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? People don't hate kids. Even people who want to vote no, they don't hate kids. They may hate taxes or high taxes or government or the way everything is funded, and so they protest that way. I understand that. But the key to getting something like that to pass is to motivate people who are self-sacrificial, who are willing to give more of themselves to help kids and help other people to show up. Their hearts are wired that way, but you've got to get them to overcome their apathy and show up to vote. They have to believe that their one vote matters, that their one person, their one life makes a difference. That's how it is in so much of life. We have to convince people whose hearts are in the right places to show up, to be overcoming their apathy and believe that they can make a difference. So the opposite of love so often isn't really hate. Sometimes it may be fatigue, but usually it's apathy. Being a church today like the early church, being on fire for God, living and loving in powerful and sacrificial ways, doesn't take us overcoming our hate. It's our apathy. We don't fail to help with Relay for Life because we hate cancer victims. If you didn't help with Relay for Life, it's not because you hate cancer victims. We just assume that someone else is gonna do it, that there's a team in place and we're not really needed. 
We don't fail to help with Sunday school a few months a year or vacation Bible school. And Janelle says, you know, this is the biggest outreach we have. We need people to help with that. We don't fail to help with those things because we hate kids. We don't. It's not hate. It's apathy. We just assume that someone else would do those things that we're not really needed. Just like there's a vote that's going to take place. My vote isn't really needed. My help isn't really needed with this. We're just apathetic. We believe it's just one more person and our effort doesn't really matter. So you see, it isn't hate that prevents a church from being on fire for God, from changing the world, from reaching out in love to people in as many ways as we can. We don't hate all those people out there who don't know the love of God, children who might come to our VBS who don't yet know God. We don't hate those people. We're just sometimes apathetic, not really caring or believing enough that God can really use us, use our efforts to make a difference. Yes, sometimes it's fatigue, but often it's apathy. So I want to show you one other ACT type question this morning. Spark is to flame as Christian is to Spark is to flame as Christian is to, and here's the answer. It's the word church with you are taken out of it. Spark is to flame. Spark ignites a flame. As Christian is to church. What sets the church on fire? You are the missing thing that sets a church on fire. You are. Each one of you. Each one of you is the spark. You are that that sets the church on fire. Just like that Pentecost so long ago when they lived their lives so boldly and people came to know the love of God. That spark can be in each one of us. The Holy Spirit's power can be each one of us like it was in those Christians so long ago when we understand that each one of us is the spark that can set a church on fire. Next week after worship, we're bringing forth a plan that calls for a $1.6 million expansion of this building. It's what people voted to see, and we put a lot of work behind the scenes to bring it forward. We've grown to fill our available space for ministry, and yet we have new ministries we want to begin, and more people we want to reach with the love of God. And we certainly have not been growing here because of your pastor. We've been growing because each one of you has been a spark that has helped our church to do amazing ministries to others. From the garage sale to the Relay for Life team to the backpack ministry to all the things you do, to the Sunday school program with all the kids that we have, to our youth ministry, to on and on, everything that we do that you make help happen, we are reaching people with the love of God. Just like the early church did on that first Pentecost and after, with the way that we live and love and serve. So I say to you this morning on this Pentecost Sunday, Please don't stop now. Please don't stop now. You are the spark. When God is alive and burning in you, the church is on fire for God. And when the church is on fire for God, buildings grow and new ministries begin and love is shared and souls are reached and lives are changed. When we overcome our apathy, and each one of us is part of what God is doing to change the world. I tell people every year at Christmas, if you've been here at Christmas, you know I say this every year, my favorite moment of the whole year is that moment on Christmas Eve when we each take our candle and light it and hold it while we sing Silent Night and then sing a song reminding us to take that candle, that spark, and go out and light our world. And each year at that moment, I challenge you to try to keep that spark alive in the coming year, in the coming new year, as the world and all of its pressures try to dim it. But you know, no matter what happens in our lives outside, and I know they go through sad and hard and difficult and crazy times sometimes, no matter what happens in the world outside, in the end, nothing can really dim that spark of the Holy Spirit alive in us as we hold that candle, as we begin the new year, as we try to keep that spark, that flame alive throughout the year. Nothing can dim that spark except our own apathy. It's our own apathy that gets in the way. That's the opposite of love, not hate. 
It's our own apathy. As long as each one of us believes that each one of us can make a difference, that each one of us is needed, that when you hear the call, hey, we need people to help here and there, I know there are a lot of announcements in this place, right? That's because there are so many people trying to do things to change the world, trying to help us to unite together as a family, to work together to make those things happen so love can flow out from us into the world and people can know the love of God on this Pentecost Sunday, 2,000 years after that first Pentecost so long ago when that's how Christians lived, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, when it flowed out from them, when they loved each other and they loved their neighbors and people said, what's going on over there with those people? We want to be part of what they're doing. Friends, may we live still so boldly today as they did then, that people see the way we're living and loving and want to be part of what's happening at Howland United Methodist Church. All we need to do for that to happen on this Pentecost Sunday is to overcome our own apathy, sometimes our fatigue, but our apathy, and realize that what we can do matters, each one of us. The church needs each one of us. You are the spark that sets a church on fire because the more people we have working together, the more we can do to glorify God and the more lives we can change. From the ground, it's gonna come up this time as we end this time of worship together and lead us in singing a song that helps us to remember to be just that, a church on fire, and praying that God will make us that in this season of Pentecost and always a church on fire for God, changing this world for him. It's called Build Your Kingdom Here. I invite you to stand, please, if you are able.
know, the acolytes have an underrated job. I was talking about symbols with the kids this morning, and every week the acolytes take the flame. Of course, they light it here to remind us that God's presence is here in us to set us on fire. And then they carry the flame out before us to remind us that when we go out there, we're supposed to light the world on fire for God. You know, the acolytes have that very important symbol. They remind us every week. They carry the flame down there to remind us we're supposed to leave this place on fire for God and letting love flow from us. Sometimes I wish I'd given my kids unconventional names, you know, instead of like Samuel and Christian. One of them, I sometimes, I was working on my sermon this week, I said to myself, I should have named one of my kids Spark, you know. <laughs> Spark Darren. We could call them Sparky when they're little, you know. <laughs> Spark Darren. So just so someone could say to me, why would you name your kid Spark? Just so I could answer because I wanted him or her to always remember and always remind others just by their name that each one of us has the capacity to set this world on fire for God with the way that we live and love. So yeah, I didn't kid name any of my kids Spark. My wife, of course, would not let me do something like that. But may we always remember each one of us. Each one of us can be the spark. You are that spark that can set this world on fire. Your life, your mission, your witness, your ministry makes a difference in this place. Because when we all work together as a church, we can set this community and this place on fire for God and reach more people and change more lives. That's why the church exists. Let us be that spark that God, need, that God needs us to be as we leave this place on Pentecost and always. Wait, just stay outside, stay outside the North for a few minutes, have some cake as we celebrate new members and the birthday of the church and Pentecost. And as we leave, may we remember to be that spark in this world, setting the church in this world on fire. As you do so with the way you live in love, may the blessings of God the Father Almighty, Jesus Christ the Son, our Lord and Savior, and the peace and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Thank you.